Good morning. You are listening to another episode of Black Man Into the Wild. I'm blessed to be here with you all today. And as always, I'm blessed to have you here with me as well. Uh, it, it looks like we've made it into the 2022 level of the simulation. I hope everyone was able to enjoy a happy new year. Out here, I, I was able to get out and do a couple of short hikes in the area. You know, sometimes I, I do like to talk about those here a little bit on the podcast. You know, one of them was in White Salmon, Washington, just on the outskirts of the Gifford Pinco National Forest, and then uh, a nice trail along the Salmon River through the Mount Hood Wilderness in Oregon, just about 60 miles east, actually, of downtown Portland. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we actually got a good amount of snow out here over the holidays. Uh, they definitely got hit up there in the mountains. I know I got a couple of weather warnings, but even down here in town, I feel like we got a little bit more than we have in the past couple of years. Uh, but I say all that to say, really, you know, it was just nice to get out there in the winter, kind of get to see the forest wearing a different outfit with the snow blanketing the trees and the forest floor. So I'll leave a link above to a couple of quick highlight videos I put together, and you can check those out on your own time. Now, with all that aside, there are definitely a lot of tech-related stories that I do want to talk about, uh, a lot that transpired towards the end of last year. Uh, specifically, you know, when we take a look back at the social media landscape and some of the chess moves that were made heading into the new year, and now that we are in January, uh, we definitely have to talk about Jack Dorsey, right? You know, who we've mentioned here on the podcast before uh, as being an influential person and an influential voice in the world of Bitcoin and other decentralized blockchain technologies and projects. Well, he stepped down from his role as the CEO of Twitter uh, to begin focusing his efforts more on the leading cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, the Lightning Network, and securing other digital assets. In fact, within days, you know, stepping down from his role at Twitter, the fintech giant Square, uh, which Dorsey is also the founder and CEO of, announced that it would be changing its name and rebranding to Block, which is a, a nod to the company's growing interest in blockchain tech and cryptocurrency. So, a similar move there to what we saw and talked about with Facebook, you know, last year changing the name of its parent company and rebranding to Meta Platforms. Um, how, however, as it relates to, you know, his departure at, at Twitter here, the New York Times writes, uh, Mr. Dorsey's exit marks a significant shift at the company, which has navigated years of pressure from investors who thought it did not make enough money and criticism from Washington particularly from Republican lawmakers who have complained Twitter has helped stifle conservative voices in social media. The most prominent of those voices was that of former President Donald J. Trump, who Twitter barred from the platform shortly after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. We have the Oculus Quest 2 and how the metaverse stole Christmas. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this story today. You know, last year on the podcast, you know, we talked about an introduction to the metaverse with Facebook's Horizon Workrooms. Uh, and their augmented reality hardware. Now it's being reported that, you know, Facebook's parent company, Meta, uh, had the most popular app, not surprisingly, in the Apple App Store this past Christmas. And if you're wondering which app that is, none other than, of course, uh, the Oculus Virtual Reality app, uh, a clear indication that uh, Meta's virtual reality headset, you know, was one of the most popular gifts this past holiday season. So, and, and the last story I, I want to talk about today uh, and this one, I, I think, is probably the most exciting, and I don't necessarily mean that in a good way, uh, but Donald Trump's social media app is set to launch in February. According to recent App Store listings, uh, Truth Social's launch will come 13 months after the former president was banned, uh, again, from Twitter and, and Facebook. Um, so yeah, before we really get into things, you know, uh, of course, if you have not already, you know, I always like to say, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You know, like this video and you know, share with your friends if you like what you hear. In my recent conversation with Connor on the podcast, uh, for those who haven't had a chance to watch or, or listen to that interview, Connor, uh, a good friend of mine, is a songwriter and a hip hop artist and producer. Um, you know, from Cleveland, now living in LA. You know, we talked about how you know he's been leveraging different social media platforms to grow his audience. Uh, and among other things, we talked about his plans to begin embracing non-fungible token technology. Uh, and, and for that reason, the article that I, I want to read a little bit from here to try and paint the picture of where it looks like we're inevitably going, uh, and to tie in, you know, of course, what I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast 
with Jack Dorsey stepping down from his role as CEO at Twitter, this article comes from Cointelegraph uh, and talks about how Jay-Z and Jack Dorsey have hinted at the idea of their music streaming service title eyeing integrations that would support NFTs and smart contracts. Uh, now, we didn't talk about it here on the podcast, but I, I believe it was back in March of last year, uh, 2021, Square, now Block, uh, they acquired a $300 million majority stake in the music streaming service. It, it says here, Jay-Z and Dorsey have discussed the potential of adding revenue streams such as NFTs and the ability for smart contracts to enable greater financial autonomy for artists in the future. Despite title lagging behind top music streaming services with their 2019 $166 million in revenue paling in comparison to the $2.8 billion and $7.4 billion generated by Apple and Spotify respectively during the same year, uh, Dorsey and Jay-Z believe they can capture significant market share by using blockchain technologies to offer empowering tools to artists. So, you know, based on what I understand about, you know, smart contracts and from the article, uh, of course, you know, we know the tech companies will be the, the ones to capitalize first on this, but it, it does seem as if, the, you know, this move is really intended to benefit, you know, the artists in the long run when it comes to transparency with ownership and publishing and royalties and, and things like that. Um, you know, all of the things that we hear, you know, about artists going over to Twitter, ironically, you know, to share their grievances about different contract situations that they're in with their record labels. And, you know, we always hear stories about the importance of artists retaining ownership of their masters and things like that. Uh, well, it, it looks like they're, they're working on figuring out a way to, to solve that um, or, or solve those, you know, issues. So, and I forget which episode that was, but, you know, we did speak about a company here called Audius, a new blockchain based music streaming platform uh, that was just a couple of episodes ago, uh, and, and what they're doing to establish their presence in the metaverse to compete with Spotify and Apple Music. So uh, this space is, is definitely heating up. You know, a lot of developing stories that, you know, we'll continue to cover here. Um, hard pivot here, but, but somehow still related. <laughs> this story is particularly interesting to me, uh, you know, because when you know, I first started the podcast before I knew exactly which direction I wanted to take it. Uh, one of the things I talked about was what I thought then President Donald Trump, uh, what his plans would be after leaving office. You know, at the time we were learning more about this Austin based, uh, Austin, Texas, uh, to be clear, based company called Funware um, that was working with his 2020 reelection campaign to develop a cell phone app that actually allowed campaign staff to monitor the movements of his millions of supporters and even offer intimate access to their social networks. So, you know, now here we are in 2022 and, you know, we fast forward uh, and Donald Trump is officially launching, you know, a social media platform uh, and Melania Trump is even selling NFTs. So, you know, would you look at that from the Guardian here? And I'm just going to skim through this to give you uh, the scoop, but you all can leave a comment and let me know what you think will happen when uh, we inevitably have Truth First Twitter definitely battling it out on the internet, but uh, hopefully not in the streets of our cities. Um, <laughs> but it says here, Donald Trump's new media venture plans to launch its social media app, Truth Social, on February 21st, according to an Apple App Store listing. Truth Social, the Trump Media and Technology Group alternative to Twitter, is available for pre-order now before going live in February. The app's launch will come 13 months after Facebook and Twitter banned the former U.S. president for allegedly encouraging his supporters to participate in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol based on unsubstantiated claims of widespread fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Now marking the one-year anniversary of the attack, Joe Biden uh, said this past Thursday that his predecessor's false claims could unravel the rule of law and subvert future elections. Um, believe it or not, Trump supporters and retail investors have snapped up digital world stock, uh, betting that Trump's popularity with his Republican political base will translate into commercial runaway success. TMTG agreed in October to merge with the blank check firm at a valuation of $875 million. However, the media group is currently valued at $4.3 billion based on the stock price of Digital World Acquisition Corp. TMTG and Apple, of course, did not respond to requests for comment, uh, but a source familiar with the matter confirmed that February 21st, uh, so a little bit over a month away, 
uh, is the planned launch date for the app. Now, you know, if we thought the past two years were something, uh, trust me, you know, we ain't seen nothing yet. 